Good evening, everyone. Myself, Dr. Amar Suri, and I will discuss the imaging basics for the biliary cancers. First of all, we will go with hyalocolangiocarcinoma. Hyalocolangiocarcinoma. It is a ductal carcinoma which is involving either right hepatic duct, left hepatic duct, confluence of both hepatic ducts, or their bifurcations. Clad skin tumor. It is a specific term applied to the tumor of primary hepatic duct confluence. And for hyalocolangiocarcinoma, we are using bismuth correlate classification, according to which the type one variety it is involving the common hepatic duct but sparing the hepatic confluence. In type two variety, there is involvement of the uh, confluence of the both the hepatic ducts as well as the common hepatic duct. In type three variety, there is involvement of the confluence as well as one of the hepatic ducts, right or left, it is involved. In type three A variety, it is the right hepatic duct. In type three B variety, it is the left hepatic duct. In type four variety, there is involvement of the both the hepatic duct as well as confluence. Multifocal biliary involvement, it is also classified as type four variety. And in type five variety, there is stricture at the junction of common hepatic duct and cystic duct. So, according to the Japanese classification of morphology, the cholangiocarcinomas can be of three variety. Either it can be mass forming, intraductal growing, or periductal infiltrating. While we are talking about the higher cholangiocarcinoma, this variety, periductal infiltrating, it is the most common one. In the mass forming ductal carcinoma, there is presence of the mass which is replacing the duct as well as infiltrating the periductal soft tissue. In periductal infiltrating variety, there is thickening of the duct, and this malignant thickening is extending into the surrounding periductal soft tissue. In intraductal growing variety, the tumor is limited within the duct, and it doesn't extend into the periductal soft tissue. While evaluating the hyalocolangiocarcinoma, triple phase CT scan with MRCP, it is the ideal investigation for the staging purpose. And it should be carried out before stenting because the stent will create significant amount of metallic artifacts on CT scan as well as on MRCP. It hinders the exact evaluation, exact extent of tumor evaluation. So we go with the triple phase CT scan and look for the enhancement pattern and extent of involvement, any sort of vascular involvement, vascular variations, any nodal disease if present, any metastasis, and lobar atrophy. This all factors helps to decide this uh, resectability of the tumor. Triphasic CT scan is must as we want to look for the vascular structures which are located near porta. Tumor usually shows the delayed enhancement in cases of cholangiocarcinoma. However, sometimes some tumors may show earlier enhancement also. MRCP maps out the biliary extent of the tumor as per bismuth correlate classification and combination of both of these modal modalities help us, help us to stage the tumor. So this is a MRCP image of type 1 cholangiocarcinoma according to bismuth correlate where there is abrupt cutoff in the con common hepatic duct while the confluence of both the hepatic duct it is well preserved. This is the type 2 variety where there is a tumor which is infiltrating the common hepatic duct as well as confluence of the both the hepatic duct and significant dilatation of IHBR we can see here. This is type 3B variety where the hyalur cholangiocarcinoma it is extending into the left hepatic duct also. This is type 4 variety where uh, there is abrupt cutoff of both the hepatic ducts the tumor is extending into uh, the hepatic ducts on either side. This is another case of type 4 variety. Now, uh, vascular involvement, it is very crucial in cases of hyalur cholangiocarcinoma. We should look for portal vein, hepatic vein, hepatic artery, and IVC involvement. If at all any vascular structure is involved, it significantly affects the surgical management. More than 180 degree arc of contact between the tumor and the mass lesion, it suggests the vascular invasion. So this is a case of hyalocolangiocarcinoma. This hypodense lesion, it is infiltrating and encasing the portal vein. Actually, it is extending and uh, infiltrating the left branch of portal vein and even its bifurcation. 
This is another case where we can see a hyla cholangiocarcinoma at the pota region with significant dilatation of this hepatic ducts and it is encasing the hepatic artery. Any sort of lobar atrophy which can occur due to the vascular supply or biliary drainage compromise, it should be mentioned in our notes and dilated and crowded biliary ducts, they are the early sign of lobar atrophy. Lymph node evaluation, usually the nodes are located along the hepatoduodenal ligament around the cystic duct and CBD as well as hepatic artery and portal vein. But if the nodes are there beyond the hepatoduodenal ligament, means along the celiac axis, paraortic region, or retropancreatic region, they render uh, they render the tumor irresectable. So they need a specific mention. Paraortic nodes are the final station for the drainage of hyalocholangiocarcinoma. Now the non-resectability criteria it includes hepatic duct involvement up to secondary radicals on either side or tumor extends further than 2 cm from hilum. Encasement of the vessels, like uh, if the proper hepatic artery is encased or greater than 2 cm segment of main portal vein before bifurcation is encased, then the tumor is not resectable. Atrophy of one of the hepatic lobes with contralateral vascular involvement, means uh, proper hepatic, art, uh, means hepatic artery or uh, portal vein branches, or contralateral secondary confluence involvement with atrophy of, atrophy of one of the hepatic lobes, it also contraindicates the surgery. Uh, obviously, the metastasis in that we cannot operate and nodes beyond the hepatoduodenal ligament, celiac, paraortic, and retropancreatic, they also contraindicate the surgery. So, uh, here we can see uh, the branching pattern of portal vein into the right and left. Here the right branch of portal vein dividing into the anterior and posterior divisions and this is the uh, this is the uh, P point and uh, this is the left branch of the portal vein which is giving off the umbilical branch. So this is the U point. So any uh, extension of tumor beyond the P point or U point they need a specific mention in the report. Variations in the hepatic artery, they are of very much importance because the hepatic artery it comes in close relation with the common bile duct and during the surgery, if, if at all any variation in the hepatic artery is there, it can be injured. Replaced right hepatic artery arising from the SMA, it is the most common variation encountered. Similarly, replaced left hepatic artery from left gastric artery or trifurcation of the common hepatic artery into the right, uh, right left uh, hepatic artery and gastroduodenal artery. If at all these variations are present, they need a specific mention. So the take-home points in case of hyalocholangiocarcinoma are imaging always before stenting. We should look for biliary extent of the tumor according to the bismuth collet classification. Any sort of vascular structure involvement or anatomical variations with the help of triphasic CT. Any sort of nodal involvement, especially beyond the hepatoduodenal ligament because it uh, renders the tumor non-resectable. Any sort of metastasis and lobar atrophy. So next, we will move on to imaging of gallbladder malignancy. These cases usually are having delayed presentation and having advanced stage, usually affects the elderly age group. And main focus of imaging is on extension of the tumor, any sort of nodal, uh, nodal disease and metastasis. So uh, morphology of the gallbladder malignancy, it can be of two types. Either it can be mass forming one or it can present in the uh, form of wall thickening. When it is mass forming, it can be a polypoidal mass within the gallbladder lumen or entire mass is replacing the gallbladder or if it is presenting as wall thickening, it can be a diffuse wall thickening or interrupted asymmetrical wall thickening of uh, gallbladder. Ultrasonography, it is the preliminary screening modality and we can easily visualize the mass if uh, present within the gallbladder lumen or any polypoidal lesion uh, present within the lumen. Any polypoidal lesion which is having size greater than 10 mm uh, with or without vascularity, it needs further evaluation with the CT scan to rule out malignancy. Lesion between 6 to 10 mm size can be evaluated with follow-up ultrasound on regular basis. USG, it is a dynamic modality. So sometimes the tumefective sludge like uh, entity, it can be easily differentiated from mass lesion by changing the patient, patient position. 
the gall bladder cancers which are presenting as gall bladder wall thickening sometimes they can mimic chronic cholecystitis and uh, it may be difficult to differentiate it on ultrasonography alone so we need ct and mri for uh, as problem solving modality so this can be the morphology of gall bladder cancer where we can see the mass forming gall bladder cancer irregular wall thickening or polypoidal variety where the polypoidal lesion arises from the mucosa and protrudes into the lumen of gall bladder so these are the images of gall bladder polyps uh, in first two images we can see couple of polyps along the hepatic surface of the gall bladder uh, which are seen as this echogenic foci and they are of uh, less than 10 mm in size so they can be followed up regularly this is another case where there is presence of gall bladder calculus near the gall bladder neck but uh, in the fundal region there is irregular soft tissue thickening with surface irregularity we can see and uh, this can be a malignant lesion it needs further evaluation with ct scan now ct scan it is the most useful modality for the staging purpose because it accurately differentiates the t2 stage from the t3 stage in t2 stage there is involvement of the perimuscular tissue in between the muscularis mucosa and serosa while in t3 stage the tumor extends beyond the serosa it infiltrates the liver or adjacent one organ structure so this differentiation is very much accurate in ct scan t2 from t3 in t4 stage the tumor is very much advanced and it has spreaded beyond the gall bladder infiltrating liver or major vascular structures or more than one organ so uh, it can be better evaluated with the triple phase uh, ct scan study triphasic study gives the clear picture about the stage of the tumor so this is the early stage of gall bladder cancer where we can see a polypoidal irregular mass lesion within the lumen of the gall bladder and uh, there is presence of multiple gall bladder calculi in the dependent part uh, along the hepatic surface of the gall bladder we can see this couple of polypoidal lesions and if we see on the coronal images the mass is limited well within the gall bladder it is not extending beyond the uh, beyond the gall bladder liver and surrounding structures are totally free there is no nodal disease no metastasis so this is the early stage gall bladder cancer this is the advanced case of gall bladder cancer where we can see this mass lesion of gall bladder it has infiltrated into the adjacent liver parenchyma there is also presence of peritoneal and omental disease with associated ascites and in coronal images if we see the mass lesion is adhering to the hepatic flexure of the colon next is the lymph node evaluation uh, n1 stage lymph nodes correspond to the uh, nodes adjacent to cystic duct common bile duct portal vein or hepatic artery and in n2 stage it is the along the celiac axis superior mesenteric artery or pericaval periaortic location so here is the case where we can see presence of necrotic nodal uh, lesions in peripancreatic region near porta as well as in the periaortic location and uh, this is a case of ocell in gall bladder where calcified gall bladder wall is present with irregular wall thickening and the mass is infiltrating adjacent liver segment and multifocal metastatic lesions are there in the liver Uh, this is another advanced case of gall bladder malignancy where the gall bladder mass it has infiltrated the adjacent liver parenchyma and case the portal vein as well as multifocal metastatic lesions we can see in both lobes of liver uh this was an interesting case we saw a few weeks back uh, in which there was presence of gall bladder calculus the entire gall bladder was contracted but we could see the continuous mucosal enhancement of the gall bladder wall that is a uh, mural thickening with intramural hypoattenuating areas the patient was operated and it was diagnosed to be a xenogranulomatous cholecystitis this is a similar case of xenogranulomatous cholecystitis where we can see a continuous mucosal enhancement thickened gall bladder wall with intramural hypoattenuating areas similarly here uh, in the mr images we can see a continuous mucosal enhancement as well as few intramural hyper intense areas actually in xenogranulomatous cholecystitis due to the increased pressure in gall bladder there is inspissation of bile in the gall bladder wall which leads to severe inflammation and uh, ultimately infiltration of macrophages and foam cells 
why it needs a special mention along with malignancy because it can mimic gallbladder malignancy and uh, it has so severe inflammatory reaction that it can cause fibrosis even adherence to adjacent structure in advanced stages so uh, xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis it should be differentiated from gallbladder cancer and uh, here are the in phase and out phase images of uh, gallbladder where we can see presence of fat in the gallbladder wall it is bright on in phase image and it is dark on this out phase image this helps us to uh, diagnose xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis diffusion weighted image it is always a problem solving uh, a problem solving mr sequence and uh, it is marker of cellularity of the lesion here we can see a gallbladder wall thickening along the hepatic surface of gallbladder and it is showing restricted diffusion on diffusion weighted images which corresponds to mitotically active lesion with high cellularity so uh, in the differentiating xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis from gallbladder malignancy it is the continuous mucosal enhancement in case of xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis without any sort of breach in mucosal lining presence of intramural hypoattenuating nodules while in case of malignancy we will have disrupted mucosal lining no intramural nodules and uh, if we take mr images we can detect the fat in uh, xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis while in uh, cases of gallbladder malignancy diffusion weighted images gives us a clear picture so the take home points in the gallbladder malignancy are uh usg it is the screening tool to detect the gallbladder malignancy ct scan it is best for the staging of the tumor and mri it is a problem solving modality especially when we are coupling diffusion solving modality especially when we are coupling diffusion weighted images with t2 weighted images okay i will like to conclude my talk with this thank you mm -hmm.